The Goat House is back with every NFL trade candidate to keep an eye on heading into the season. And I got a lot of candidates on this video, but they're different. Some of these guys aren't really being talked about a ton. And maybe I'm saying keep an eye on these guys over the next few weeks heading into the season. And some of these guys, people are going, that guy's getting traded. Or they, I want that guy to get traded. And I'm going to say, you know, maybe I have an argument on why they won't. But all these guys have a, has a they have a possibility to be traded. And that leads us to the big one. Brandon Ayuk of the 49ers. It's all the talk right now. And there's still people that are saying, you know, more likely to be dealt than not. Um, a lot of people are saying the Steelers. It's got to happen. Uh, people were reporting it was happening. And it's all still possible. But my stance this whole time has been anything could happen. But my stance, if you follow us on Twitter, has been, I get the feeling that he's going to end up back in the Niners, and it's coming out more and more that is actually a stronger possibility now than it was a few days ago. But that's kind of been my stance. I had the feeling that the Niners know what they're doing. They let Ayuk go out there, you know, talk contract details, and they let other teams do the work for them, the Niners, that is. They let other teams do that, and they can go back, and they know, instead of just throwing that big number out there that Ayuk wants, uh, you know, give them that that layout that other teams are working on. They know that the Patriots, he wasn't going to play for the Patriots, even though they offered him a big deal. And, you know, that's the thing, too. You could come back to the Niners and say, hey, Patriots were offering me this big amount of money, which has been reported. So that's what I want. The Niners could go, well, hey, go play for the Patriots. They gave us a generous offer. We'll trade you there. And, he, and they know he's not going to want to play for the Patriots. That's already kind of been confirmed there. And they're already out. So that gave the Niners leverage. I think they're very smart with this whole thing. And they never once accepted a deal from the Steelers. They've, the Steelers have never offered them enough. And now this is the opportunity for a trade, though. Because the Niners are putting it out there. Hey, we're working out contract with uh, extension with Ayuk now. We're, we're less looking less at the trade, even though it's still a possibility. We're still talking. And the Steelers could go, all right. They're going to sign him. We don't want that to happen. Let's throw more in the pot here. And then that could result in that Steelers trade possibly you know, ending up happening. Uh, the Browns, you know, they offered a lot. You know, could they offer Amari Cooper? That's been talked about as well. It just doesn't really feel like Ayuk's going to play, you know, for them. It hasn't been confirmed on the level of the Patriots. But uh, anything is still on the table. A trade's still possible, like I, like I said, but I feel like this whole time the Niners were up to something. They were being smart. They're letting other teams do the contract, basically, um, and they're starting to gain a little bit of leverage here. So that's kind of been my stance, but again, a trade is still certainly possible, so a big guy to watch there. And Amari Cooper is another one. Uh, you know, I, for him to be traded, I think it has to be it has to do with Brandon Ayuk. And, and if Ayuk is traded to the Browns, Cooper is traded to the Niners, and the Niners are good with the Browns' trade offer, and that in ninety nine percent chance involves Amari Cooper. Uh, but I guess the question is, does Brandon Ayuk want to play for them? It doesn't sound like he does. Whether it's because it's the Browns, it's a good team, because it's the Browns, or because of the contract, maybe. But it doesn't sound super likely at this point. But if uh, Ayuk, you know, doesn't like these these right now and future contract offers from the 49ers, he may go, all right, I guess I'll play for the Browns. Seems like the Patriots are out. He doesn't want to play for them. I guess I'll play for the Browns, you know, if the Niners aren't uh, accepting the Steelers' offer. So I guess that's the way it's possible. I'm not really counting on it at this point. So a lot of guys in this video, but we're kind of getting the guys out of the way that they're being talked about. I'm not really counting on it in the trade, but possible. I have to put them on the video because they're possible, but they're being talked about. Leads us to Devontae Adams. People aren't really talking about it. I, I don't, I'm not counting on it again. And it does kind of make sense. The Raiders aren't a team that's going to win a Super Bowl right now, even though they have pieces. They're kind of a quarterback away, which is a big thing. And they're trying to find the quarterback of the future. Is Devontae Adams going to be part of that plan long term future? Probably not, even though he's still balling out. So it could make sense to trade him if you can get a lot for him. The issue is the contract. It's very, very expensive. Not this year, but next year, the year after. They're going to need to make an agreement. The other team of trading for him is going to need to make an agreement. Let's wipe out those two years. Let's just have this one year, and we can work on an extension that's you know more doable for us, more reasonable. Um, so a lot needs to happen. I think he's been brought up a little bit more in the trade talks out there on Twitter, the fans, uh, the media, because his agent uh, or you know Brandon Ayuk's agent's been at the Raiders camp, and that and there's all these three team deal discussions, which would be pretty cool. Unlikely. Uh, but I think that's like the only chance. Like if somehow he's on the Niners and Ayuk, does he Ayuk go to the Raiders? I don't think so. Go somewhere else. A lot needs to happen, as you can tell. But being talked about a bit, 
I kind of got to shut it down a little bit. Uh, CD Lambs is one that's being brought up more now because Jerry Jones said he's not really focused on, which is mind blowing to say. I have a take on that, but not really focused right now. That's like the not not the top priority for him. In other words, CD Lambs contract extension, and right away, right away, CD Lamb commented on Twitter on that post. LOL. Uh, and then Micah Parsons retweeted it. This is not, you know, this is not a good look. But I have a theory. I have a theory, and maybe as time goes on and there's no deal for Lamb, maybe this theory is wrong. Uh, and I'm not saying this is the case, but it's just a theory that maybe they, maybe Jerry Jones is lying. Maybe they've been working on con, uh, contract uh, for Lamb. Maybe it's close to done, and Jerry's out there saying, being Jerry, like, hey. Yeah, I'm not focused on it, even though he is. And Lamb's going, LOL. This is my, you know, this is funny. This is my guy being funny. That's a, it's a theory. It's a theory. Uh, to mo- in most people's eyes, it does not seem great right now. Uh, CeeDee Lamb is, is a guy that you got to get a contract. I, I, I'd pay him pretty much what he wants. I, I would, you know, is he worth the same amount as Justin Jefferson? Hey, I, I don't think far off. I don't think far off at all. But if you have to give him pretty much that same contract or just a tad under it, I'm good with that. Um, Bottom line is, I, I think my prediction is they're more focused on Lamb than Dak, Pre- Dak Prescott. I could I could be wrong on that one. It's just kind of a, a feeling. So we'll see what happens there. Um, it'd be pretty wild if they just moved on from him. Uh, they're pretty thin on receivers at the moment. I feel like I know Cooks can still play. Does Tolbert step up? Who knows? But they need C.D. Lamb. I, I don't see how, and I think people kind of agree with, with me on that. They, I, I don't see how they could possibly trade them, but Things are getting interesting here. Um, Robert Woods, Woods is definitely one to watch. You know, a little bit smaller of a name. Uh, we saw a small trade yesterday, corner for corner, Vikings and Cowboys. So we'll see a lot of the smaller trades. But uh, Robert Woods is one to watch. The Texans are loaded at receiver. Stephon Diggs, Tank Dow, Nico Collins. Noah Brown's pretty solid as well. Woods has been shopped around in the recent past, You know, going from the Rams to the Titans, Titans to the Texans. Uh, you know, So they've been moved around, I should say, hopping some teams. Uh a guy maybe you want in your locker room, a veteran guy, so I think he could be definitely uh, traded uh, for for something very little. Um, but maybe the Texans you know, want his mind, you know, his voice in that locker room. So uh, we will see. Could it be a guy that's just traded for a seventh round pick or, or swap of picks? I think the bulk of the trades that we see, and we do see a number of trades, you know, through and after preseason before the season, but I think a bulk of them are the small trades, a swap of players, a player for a small pick or a conditional pick. To me, those are fun, um, but I know people are expecting those made, you know, huge trades. You know, do we get them? Traylon Burks, another one. I think this was way more likely, and it's still possible, but I thought it was way more likely, like actually a high chance uh, of him being dealt before the DeAndre Hopkins injury. Now, DeAndre Hopkins maybe a long shot to play week one, maybe more likely not to play week one. So he is dealing with an injury. So, and then they do have Calvin Ridley, you know, they do, they do have Tyler Boyd and they have some other options, but so maybe, you know, it's not like they absolutely need him. The former first round pick that was supposed to be the replacement for AJ Brown, who just really hasn't fully worked out. Um, but you know, still has some upside, but could he be dealt? I, you know, I've been thinking, I know the Steelers are trying to get Brandon Ayuk, and this is a major drop off. But I, I, I've been thinking Traylon Burks to the Steelers if they need a receiver. You know, if they don't deal for Brandon Ayuk, that's a team that makes sense because they could use another receiver. They like the, the physical guys that can block that are really good after the catch. Uh, Arthur Smith, actually being the offense coordinator for Tennessee a few years ago, uh, and they kind of drafted Burks for that style of system. Uh, because they're running it for a bit now, the Titans are going away from that. Uh, I thought that would make some sense. You know, a team that could just use another body, a team that's going to run the ball a bit. You know, not they're not trying to throw the ball deep downfield, keep it underneath. I, I thought that one made a little bit of sense, but maybe the Titans think, hey, he's still got upside. Maybe this new staff could kind of get things going here, and maybe they need the body because Hopkins is injured. But it's definitely not a long-term injury with DeAndre Hopkins. So I think Trenton Burks is one. It's an interesting one to watch because what does he go for? Do you trade? Next to nothing because he hasn't done anything really yet. I feel like he's got a little more value than next to nothing because he still has some upside, you know, and still could be a valuable piece to a team. Uh, Next, we got T. Higgins. Another one that I kind of got to throw in this video because, you know, I guess he's not happy with the franchise tag, even though he said he's going to play for the Bengals this year. I think that's the case. And they're trying to make a Super Bowl run. I think he plays, you know, on the the one-year remaining deal here. 
and then test free agency next year, or maybe the Bengals kind of give them that deal, but they got to get got to give other guys the deal. So this could be a one more year thing uh, with T Higgins and the Bengals. Uh, another one that I, you know, being talked about a little bit less now than before. I'm not really expecting a trade, but does something crazy happen? You know, where another team's really desperate for receiver and they throw, you know, they throw everything at the Bengals for T Higgins. Um, certainly possible. Another Bengal that's been kind of brought up a little bit. It's kind of getting a little more quiet now. Trey Hendrickson, they're, they're a big-time pass rusher. But a couple months ago, it was like, hey, he wants a new contract or he wants to be traded. The Bengals don't really feel like they want They kind of just gave him a revised contract a couple years ago. They don't want to do it again. Um, he is still really, really good playing the best ball really he's ever played. But how much long, like how much value do you throw at him? Um, you know, they have Hubbard, they have Miles Murphy waiting in the wing. They have other options as well. So I feel like they, they the Bengals are fans of keeping the contract. Trey Hendrickson, perfect world. You know, he's not going to sit out. He's going to play for the Bengals, but perfect world. He gets a kind of a revised contract, um, you know, from them. But yeah, maybe that, maybe it kind of sparks back up. Maybe a team, you know, needs a pass rusher. Maybe somebody goes down before the start of the season and they give the Bengals a good offer and they're willing to give, give Trey Hendrickson a long-term deal, a revised contract. So uh, I think he's definitely, I'm not saying it's likely, but I think it's way more likely than a T Higgins trade. And I feel like Bengals, you know, Bengals have guys that could step up. I think Miles Murphy has some potential. Tough part, Cam Sample out for the year now. He got injured. That was a key rotational guy. Um, but one to watch because it was talked about by, you know, that he very possibly could be traded a few months ago. And it's not being talked about now because he's still on the team. You know, he's out there for them, but we'll see if something kind of sparks back up here. Uh, Matthew Judon, another one. And it recently, it sounded like, yeah, maybe he'll play out the remainder, you know, this one year left, uh, with the Patriots, uh, because there's no trade talks and they're not giving him a new deal, but he's not, he's not happy about it. It's kind of a cheaper deal for this year. The Patriots have a ton of cap space. It seems like they're out on the brand. I, you know, spending money on, and, and picks on brand. I, so I feel like they got to, they got to throw Matthew John some money, but so maybe it could kind of upset him. And again, team could get desperate for a pass rusher. I, you know, I honestly thought, could he go back to the Ravens? They could use another pass rush drive that, you know, Titans with Arden key, uh, you know, being suspended. Uh, could, could the, a team like that trade for Matthew Judon and not really extend him, but just kind of give him a raise on this year or maybe extend him by a year. I think that makes some sense. So the Patriots, it just really doesn't feel like the Patriots, you know, want to, you know, throw him a ton of money here. And they, they're a team that's still, they're kind of rebuilding. Is he part of that? Is it wise them to throw him money? Uh, even though they do have a lot of cap space, so even though you know, a couple weeks ago I felt like this is a this is a huge trade candidate. It, he's gonna it's gonna happen, and then maybe the last week it's like, all right, he's probably gonna play out the remainder of his deal here on the Patriots. I I think I'm in the middle there. I I you know I I think it's more likely than than the recent talk, but I maybe you know it's not a guarantee. But I I don't take this guy off your radar. I still think it's a possibility. You know, teams, players lie. You know, they're comfortable. They're good with the situation. And then, you know, a couple weeks from now, team, a team again. I mentioned the Ravens, Titans, some other teams. They might need a pass rusher, but another team might have an injury, or they might trade a guy away, and then they may need a guy like Matthew Judon for a, a, you know a contender for like a Super Bowl run. So, I, I still think it's possible. This one would be wild because Hassan Reddick has not played it down for the New York Jets, but he remain he, he still holds out. And the Jets didn't do a good job with their their homework, I, I guess, on a, on this trade because they thought they were going to trade for him and just have him on a rental while they have some young developing guys, um, you know, and just kind of use him as a Super Bowl piece, you know, a, a piece that's going to help in this Aaron Rodgers window to win a Super Bowl because he's not a long-term option in their eyes. But, he just wanted a new contract. You know, he really wanted it, and he's off in another country a couple weeks ago, more you know, a month ago or so, um, and he's not happy with the situation. So the Jets, maybe they dish him some money. Maybe they make him happy. It's hard to see that, them trading him away now that, you know, after they, they traded for him. Uh, you know, it's hard to see that. But, if man, if they just really do not want to extend his deal or give him more money, they may turn around and trade him and, it could work out. Again, we talk teams get desperate this time of year. If somebody gets injured, somebody gets suspended. I mentioned the Titans. I actually thought the Titans were uh, for pass rush. I, th- I mentioned the Titans a long time ago. 
as a legit landing spot for Reddick because they have a couple coaches, uh, new coaches on the defensive staff that are very familiar with Hassan Reddick. Uh, you know, and and they could use a pass rusher. Now Arden Key is suspended. Could they be that team? The Ravens are another team uh, to watch for. So. This would be pretty crazy. I think it's possible. I'm not saying it's happening, but I think it's possible the Jets can turn around and trade him, and maybe they don't, you know, maybe they don't lose out on a ton of value what they trade away because again, it's a really good player, and teams could be desperate. So uh, that's an interesting situation, you know, because the Jets didn't think they they needed to give him money when they trade for him. They're like, hey, we're gonna get this guy, we're gonna use him on our Super Bowl run here in the Aaron Rodgers window, and now they're like, oh shit, we go, we got to give him a deal apparently. So. Interesting one, to say the least. Uh, James Bradbury, Bradbury, another former Eagle. Oh, he is an Eagle. Redick, a former Eagle. Uh, but, yeah, the Eagles loaded up on defensive backs. They added Quinion Mitchell. Uh, you know, they have guys like uh, Keely Ringo that can step up. They had Cooper DeGene, who I think is more of a slot guy that could actually play safety, but could play outside corner as well. Uh, they already have Darius Slay starting. Um you know, they have a number of options they added throughout the secondary, not just corner. But And Bradbury kind of struggled last year. Um, he kind of fit under Jonathan Gannon's defense. A guy they would love to move on from. And there are teams out there that are pretty desperate for corners. There, there always are. At this time of the year, there always is. And there's teams that could have suffer unfortunate injuries going forward. And that could result them in being more uh, desperate for a corner. And the way the Eagles structured that contract now... Uh, they gave him too much money. Like they're gonna end up spending too much money at the end of the day, no matter if they trade him or not. But this year on the deal, they made it where if a team trades for him, they the team acquiring actually does not have to spend a ton of money. So it makes a trade more doable because he's not a super appealing uh, trade piece for another team, but it's more doable with the contract and it's a guy that has experience. You know, got to be some talent left in there. Um, you know, so I, I, it's a guy that could be cut at the end of the day, but it is certainly possible. Um, you know, teams being talked about with corners, Vikings, I think the char, I think the chargers are a decent fit, uh, for a guy like Bradbury who could, they could use a corner. Uh, I see that as a decent scheme fit there, um, in LA again, does he get cut? Do the Eagles kind of just stash him in case, you know, one of the younger guys isn't really working out a uh, bigger one here. Marshawn Latimer, star corner of the saints. You know, he's arguably when he's on the field, he's arguably the best corner in football, or one of the best corners in football. But um, yeah, he does have the durability concerns. He does have a pricey contract, but he was brought up way earlier in the off season as a legit trade candidate. And that kind of got quiet right now. But I do not think that is done. I think he still could be had. The Saints aren't going to give him away because he's a really good corner. He's been a Saint so far his whole his career. Uh, but the Saints have replacements. They have a lot of good corners. They know how to pick them. They took another one at Kool-Aid McKinstry. They have a number of good corners that could play, that can step up, that really fit the Dennis Allen, Dennis Allen defense. Uh, so they could afford to trade Lattimore, clear some space, which they need, get some more picks, which they could use. So it does kind of make sense. And there are teams desperate for for a good corner. There's teams out there trying to patch that corner hole with, uh, you know, with not, you know, no Marshawn Lattimer. I look at, you know, the Vikings just made a, a trade yesterday. It, it was a corner for corner. Andrew Booth for Nishan Wright. That doesn't really change anything. The Vikings are trying to, you know, they knew Andrew Booth was just a depth piece. They're looking for guys that can actually play for them. And they're like, hey, Booth has upside, but we know what we got in him. He's not going to start for us. He's not going to play a ton of reps for us. So let's just take a chance on another one of those guys that, hey, maybe could play for us. But, um, you know, if they traded something else, non-corner for a corner, you know, maybe they're out on it. But I, I still think they're in the mix. I still think they're a desperate team for a starting corner. And, again, there could be other teams out there. Uh, but I think Lattimore would fit that defense pretty well. Just how much do you have to trade? Uh, how much money do you, you know, they, they kind of worry about maybe his durability concerns because he does, it seems like he does miss a couple games, uh, you know, here and there. Uh, but kind of going back to why he was a legit trade candidate, you know, in talks to not being one now, not being talked about now, it actually makes sense. They want Lattimore, other teams want Lattimore to stay healthy. If they trade for him early in the offseason, he comes in, he goes to training camp and, you know, works with them. He gets injured because they're, even though he's a great player, it's a possibility that, you know, he could get injured in training camp. It's one of those players. And they're going to be like, 
Well, that trade was a complete waste. So maybe they want to, and it's a guy that doesn't really need to be in the playbook too too much, like got to learn so much. Like it's a it's a veteran guy that's really good in man coverage, one of the best in football man coverage, that just knows how to play the game. So teams are waiting to make sure he's healthy at the start of the season before they make a trade. Then they make the trade. And it's a guy, again, that doesn't really need to take too much time to learn the the defensive playbook. He knows how to go out there and cover. So that makes sense to me. That makes sense. It actually is smarter to not trade for him in this offseason before he possibly can get hurt in a meaningless time. Like If you trade for him and he gets hurt during the year, it sucks. But it's like he was out there playing for us in meaningful games, like games that count. So to me... That that's that's why it makes sense that no one has traded for him yet, and they may not trade for him at all. But I think it's a little more serious of a candidate. Uh, I'm not, not saying it's for sure happening or anything like that. But again, for that reason, and the Saints have a number of good corners uh, that could step up and, and fill uh, you know his role. Uh, another corner, Greg Newsom, who's a very solid corner if he's healthy. He's had a even at Northwestern, you know, he he had durability concerns. That was my worry. I'm like, this is a first round corner, but I'd be scared to draft him because these number of little things come pop up, and that's been happening with the Browns as well. Um, there hasn't been any talk about him being traded, and the Browns, you know, have ha- have had unfortunate injuries in their secondary. It's a really strong on paper. It's probably the best secondary in all of football. I'd say top two. Um, so maybe they just want to keep him around because they know he's super talented. But Denzel Ward is one of the best in football. He's out there as an outside corner. Martin Emerson looks like a gem that they found. He's really solid. Um, looked really good last year. Um, so Newsom might be a backup. Could you use you know the remainder. It would be him in the slot at times you could. So maybe they just choose not to trade him. But again, there are teams desperate for corners. There always is. There's going to be more teams as time goes on here, as we get through training camp and the pre and, and practice in the pre in preseason. Um, so, and he's very talented. He's, you know, if he has not, let's say he's since he's been in the NFL, let's say he didn't get injured. I think we'd be talking about him as a serious good corner right now, really good corner. Because when he's been out there earlier in the years, he's still it's, we're still early in his career. He looked really really good. So. Um, but he's had some durability issues, and the Browns have other good corners that could start over him. So um, that's a guy. It's an interesting guy that's not being talked about to, to watch. It's just what is his trade value? Talent says, you know, the Browns probably want something decent, but teams like, eh, probably going to get hurt, so I'm not trading a ton for him. So that's the tricky part with, with Greg Newsom, with him possibly being traded. Uh, Kyer Elam, definitely another one to watch. A guy that's been a little underwhelming in his young career, and he was talked about, seriously talked about, at the trade deadline last year. Teams... Uh, you know, we're, we're thinking about trading for him. I think I meant at that time I mentioned teams and it could be different now. Steelers lines, they've added corners in the meantime. Um, so which team, you know, could trade for a guy like that, which teams could use corners. We talked about the Vikings. I the Panthers could be interesting with Elam. I think a decent fit. Um, yeah, a number of teams, it, it wouldn't cost a whole lot. Bills, you know, they have Rasul Douglas, they have Benford, so Elam probably on the bench still. But issue, maybe the reason to keep him is they've had injuries, durability issues. Uh, guy like Douglas went down last year. Uh, but a guy to watch. It was a serious candidate at the trade deadline last year. Teams need corners, so it could happen. Uh, here's a safety for you. Derek Forrest of the Commanders, who dealt with some injuries last year. Uh, before last year, he was really solid. I mean, the Commander safety duo was known as a legit one with Cameron Curl, who is now on the on the Rams, and Forrest, um, who, may, you know, with this new uh, Dan Quinn system, new scheme, new staff, may not start. Kind of a question right now. Uh, but hey, that's why they didn't re-sign Curl, because Dan Quinn is a man coverage guy. Curl has been a really good split safety, you know, zone guy. And that's what Forrest. So uh, they have Chin out there. They have Quan Martin. You know, they they drafted Hampton. They have other pieces as well uh, to play that safety spot, which Quinn just has been, with the Cowboys, they've had valuable pieces uh, on that defense. But in terms of safety, it was kind of, let's just go out and get a guy that fits the defense more so, not the huge, huge names. Um, so if he's down on the depth chart a little bit, Another team needs a safety. You got a solid, uh, you know, zone covered safety. Probably a cover four or cover two team. Uh, they could trade something for him, and the, I think the Commanders would take it. So, not one that's being talked about. He's probably a better player than what people talk about as well. 
I think it's very, very possible that a guy like this could be traded. I guess it'll come down to if they decide if he's starting or not. Uh, but he hasn't really been on a heavy man coverage defense, and that's what the commanders under Dan Quinn are probably going to be. Um, Taylor Heineke has actually been brought up a little bit. Talk about some quarterbacks. There's teams that always have the back of quarterbacks that they wait. They keep them. They wait. And... They see if an other team gets desperate for a backup quarterback or even a starter. Heineke's a good backup with some starting experience. Um, so a team that, hey, you know, if they go, we got an injury or we really, really need a backup, they trade for him. So uh, because the Falcons are going to roll with Kirk Cousins and Michael Penix, that makes a lot of sense. So that's a, to me, Heineke's going to be guys going to be traded for for something little, probably something less than his value, uh, because the Falcons are like, hey, you know, we don't need him, um, you know, or. Uh, they, they could just, you know, could could cut him. I mean, one of, those are the options there for them. Another quarterback to watch out for is Tyler Huntley, who's been with the Ravens, been a really good backup for the Ravens. When they need him to fill in, he can win some football games. Been pretty deadly in preseason. And the Ravens been winning preseason like crazy. And he's a big reason. They actually lost yesterday, the first one of the year, um, you know, without him. Uh, so that was interesting. Now that's a huge thing. But uh, now he's in the Browns, and the Browns stockpiled on quarterbacks. And that could be because they have injury concerns with Deshaun Watson. But. Um, they have Jameis Winston, who it seems like, um, the guy they like in the locker room here heading, you know, in preseason, heading into the season. And, uh, and they have Dorian Thompson Robinson who looked really good in preseason last year and still has some upside Huntley to me, Huntley, I, I would like ahead of Winston and Dorian Thompson Robinson, but I guess he does need a specific scheme, uh, but not being talked about right, right now much for the Browns. I didn't think they kind of could be, maybe it's not him. Maybe it's one of those other quarterbacks, Winston or Dorian Thompson or DTR. Um, I look at a team like the Chargers, Justin Herbert dealing with a little something, not, not major. Uh, they definitely could use a backup, uh, you know, feels like a hardball type guy. I mean, he played for his brother with the Ravens and Greg Roman. He is a Greg Roman guy. He's the offense coordinator with the Chargers. So I look at a team like that. Or maybe the Ra- even the Ravens, maybe they realize, hey, we need our backup back. You know, we need them back. Um, so the Browns get a pick. They didn't have to trade a pick for them. They just signed them, and they get just a free pick out of it on a pretty good backup quarterback here. So um, I think that was part of the Browns' plan. So it's definitely one that's not really being talked about. I'd, I'd watch Tyler Huntley or just one of the Browns' backup quarterbacks. I don't think they're keeping all four of those guys. And I don't think they want to cut DTR. I don't think you just cut him. I think teams would be all over him if he was. But, yep, I guess you never know. Uh, Next, Cole Holcomb's definitely not a huge name, but this is one to watch here. The Steelers, uh, he's down on the depth chart right now for the Steelers, and he has starting experience. He's a weapon at the linebacker position. I would like for a team to get him and use him as a blitz option more. I think that that's his game. Uh, And we saw that very early in his career at Washington, and teams really kind of went away from it. I think he's kind of a downhill, kind of a slasher-type linebacker. Uh, that could do a little bit more. You know, he's not the best linebacker in the world, but I think he's more of like a weapon, um, like a Swiss Army knife. If he's a high-end rotational piece, fine. He could start for a lot of teams. Uh, but he's kind of down the depth chart right now, and and it makes sense. I think the Steelers' plan, when they brought Patrick Queen in, he's going to start. Good big-time linebacker. He's going to start. Alana Roberts is a safe bet to start next to him. He's a down, you know, downhill run stopper. Um, you know, not a not a big time name, but he's a solid player. I think he's pretty underrated. Uh, and they drafted kind of that athletic slasher, rangy you know guy in Peyton Wilson. Uh, that to me is the Cole Holcomb replacement. That's kind of your high end rotational guy behind those two starters. They don't need Cole Holcomb anymore to me. I think a team could probably get good value. I think it, they they would probably trade him for less than his value, um, which would probably be cheap. And a team can get him, and, and he can help a team out. Again, I would love for a team to bring him in and use him as a blitzer. I think that's his game, even though that's really not what it seems like right now. Um, so that that is one that it's not too small of a name either. That's one for me to me to watch. Another linebacker um, not being talked about really at all. It's a pretty solid linebacker, David Long Jr. who was solid with the Titans. He went to the Dolphins last year, a decent piece for them. Uh, and, and he may just start for the Dolphins right now. He's right now he's listed as a starter for them, and he may not get traded. It's possible, but he was brought in for that Vic Fangio defense. He's already gone, um, and, and they brought in Anthony Walker and Jordan Brooks. Now, Brooks has some durability concerns. You may say, uh, you know, Walker has some in the past as well. Uh, maybe he's a high end rotational guy. He seems like a starter to me. Uh, and then Channing Tindall was an upside guy coming out of Georgia, so maybe now's his time. 
uh, to kind of get going. Uh, and again, Long wasn't brought in by this defensive staff. So that is one to me to watch for that reason. Like they may go, hey, we can trade him for something and we can start Walker and Tyndall's, you know, kind of on the you know up and coming here. Because I think Jordan Brooks is starting for sure um, with the contract they gave him and how good he could be. I think mean, that's an, uh, obvious. Don't have to say it. Um, so I'd watch for a linebacker on the Dolphins, not named Brooks, that maybe could be dealt. Could it be Tyndall? You know, but I look at I look at David Long. So maybe one to watch or some of these linebackers that really being are, that are pretty solid that really being are, really aren't being brought up in, in the trade candidate talk here. Another Dolphin, uh, Jeff Wilson, who's a solid back, quality back with experience. I mean, they have. Good backs, right? They have Mo Sturt starting. They have A-Chan. Jalen Wright's a stud, was my number two running back. He looked really good in that preseason game uh, already. That's your one, two, three right there. Uh, I know they like Wilson. I know Mike McDaniel's a Wilson guy uh, going back to the 49ers days, but somebody else could use him as an RB2 or three, a high-end three. The Dolphins most definitely do not need him as their running back four. They can get be something small. Um, they can definitely get something small from him and they'll take that. Uh, it's definitely some running backs here. Definitely one to watch. There's teams are, that already need running backs. Hell, there's some teams that could use a starter. So we're going to talk about some running backs, but they could use a starter or definitely could use a backup. And there's going to be some injuries to the running back position going forward here leading up to the season. I hope not, but there will be. Um, so some of these running backs could be dealt. Miles Sanders, this is one that maybe a team's going to look at his contract and go, Hey, can we revise it? Then we'll trade for you. Or they're going to go, we rather just not. And maybe the Panthers will cut him because they have a list of running backs. They like Hubbard. Jonathan Brooks was the top running back in the class. He's recovering from that injury just fine. Um, so you know, they may cut Sanders. Um, this one may be more likely a cut can't than trade. But I knew he was a little overhyped, overrated when he was on the Eagles. It's more of a system thing. But he's still a talented back. He's still a talented back. Um, definitely could fit some teams, you know, could the Cowboys could use a running back, um, you know, some other teams out there that could, we'll see if some injuries could happen, but maybe more likely to be cut. AJ Dillon, interesting one here. Very interesting one because it sounded like he was signing elsewhere because he was actually in talks with multiple other teams. Uh, I want to say the Cowboys and the Colts kind of stood out to me as teams. Uh, but then the, and the Packers signed Josh Jacobs and it, Kind of felt like he was going to go elsewhere, and then it was kind of a really cheap, um, interesting deal, different type of deal for him to go back to the Packers. And they have Marshawn Lloyd, who is a big time back, uh, you know, in, in the draft with my RB three. Um, so it feels like Dylan might be their third best back, and yeah, it's a pretty damn good RB three. And they might have just brought him back, you know, and he could have signed elsewhere, maybe for a little more money, maybe not, maybe around the same, but maybe he likes Green Bay. Uh, then they draft. They have Lloyd though, so maybe he's realizing maybe maybe I you know I don't want to be here. And the Packers could trade him and get something out. You know they signed him back for you know kind of cheap, and they trade him like hey we just got something instead of just letting him walk in free agency. So I actually look back at those teams, the Cowboys and the Colts, who I thought were interested. Cowboys, he could start possibly a really good split between Dowdle and Zeke. Uh, between these guys, uh, the Colts, you'd be, I think he'd be the sure thing back up there. And there's probably some other teams, uh, you know, out there that, that possibly could use him. Um, could he join, join, you know, I don't know if the Vikings or the Packers would trade him to the Vikings. Maybe, maybe cause he's a smaller player, but Vikings could use a physical back in there. Aaron Jones, could he join Aaron Jones? Um, they could definitely could use someone like that. Jones with the durability concerns, but there are other teams out there. More, more will pop up for sure. But, and the Packers maybe could have brought him back just to, just to trade him. Um, but I really thought he's gonna end up with the Cowboys and I mentioned the Colts as well. So I keep an eye on that. And one more running back, Damian Pierce, who was a solid prospect out of Florida, um, you know, because of his physicality and he looked really good his rookie year. Then a new staff comes into Houston last, you know, uh, you know, last year, they didn't really use him a ton and now they bring in Joe Mixon. Um, you know, so that's even tougher for him to get reps. I, I don't know if the staff really loves Pierce. They don't dislike him. But I, I don't know if they really love him. Uh, they brought in Camp Akers recently, and Akers is underrated. He's solid. He's not afraid to block either. He could catch the ball. Um, so and, and and they drafted Jordan. You know, so they have options in there. Uh, I'm maybe I'm getting a little worried for Camp Akers' sake because they used him a ton. I mean, not a ton, but they used him a bit in that Hall of Fame game. That's not really a good sign for a veteran. Uh, you know, that's coming off an injury as well. So I mean, that's not a sign that you know if you're playing a guy like that. You're not too serious about him, maybe. Maybe they want—they just brought him in. They want to see what he what he had. Uh, but 
yeah, again, those teams that could use a running back, the Cowboys stand out. Like, could he be the starter for the Cowboys? I definitely could see that. So, because the Texans are all in with Joe Mixon, um, and they have options to be a backup. So, it is another running back to watch. I think we can definitely see some running back trades, some corner trades. A lot of receivers are being talked about, but people might be a little disappointed with the, with the big ones that aren't being traded. But guys like Woods, Burks, watch out for those guys. Uh, we see some pass rushers shopped around at times. You know, other guys to watch out for. And there's probably guys that end up being surprises or some smaller guys. So in the comment section, let me know if you think any of these guys are being traded, where to. But if I didn't mention a player that you definitely think will be traded, let me know in the comments. What's, who's a guy we should add to this video? Uh, if you're a fan of this video, I think you'll be a fan of the, the 32 breakout players I had, one for every team. We have that video up on the channel. You can check it out. We had some fantasy videos go up recently as well. I cannot wait for our in-season content. It's right around the corner. Hopefully you join us for all that. That's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.